Hey everyone, hello to the global CX community. Hope that you are having a great start to your Wednesday. Welcome to Catching Up with CXPA. I'm Gabe Smith, CCXP. I'm the content manager for CXPA. So happy to be joined by CXPA CEO, Greg Melia, CAE. Good morning, Greg. Gabe, always a great time to uh, spend time with you. And as we were watching that countdown on the way into this LinkedIn Live, I love that we were seeing the snow go up and away from the ground. <laughs> you know, that people are uh, feeling spring coming and, and a little bit of warmth wherever they are. I hear you, Greg. We just had about uh, 16 inches of snow that is uh, thankfully gone. Uh, high today here in Ohio is 58 degrees, so feels like it's it's about to be spring, so it's a great time to be talking about what's new as we enter the month of March. Uh, great time to take stock of what's happening with us here at CXPA and give you all and the, the global audience a, a peek at where we are. So, Greg, would love you for you to kick us off and, and get us started on what are some of the things that uh, we have going on right now. Yeah, you know, only appropriate as we enter March that we sort of talk about CXPA's March to accomplishing our 2021 goals. You know, so uh, a big thing uh, for CXPA this year is, is we want to connect the CX community throughout the entire globe. And we want to do that in a way that is safe and respectful of the many different circumstances in the world. You know, we know that there's great hope and great lining that's coming in the vaccines and the precautions that are taking, being taken. But we also know that these are challenging times with new variants arising and with the impact and distribution of the vaccines being very different across different countries. We've heard from many of our members that uh, they are not going to be able to attend meetings in person through the end of this year. They're not going to necessarily return to the office through the end of this year. So our number one priority this year, advance our mission without requiring people to come together in, in person. And so uh, for that, we've got a online survey that we'd love everybody who's watching, all CXPA members and those that are not yet members, but benefit by participating in conversations like this and others that we put on. We'd love you to visit cxpa.org and right at the top of that, uh, page, you'll see a link that you can come and tell us what topics and what formats would you like to see offered by CXBA for virtual programming in 2021? Yeah, that's really great, Greg. I mean, I think it's it's so important to understand, you know, for me to understand as content manager, you know, do you want to see, um, you know, case studies? Are you looking for small group peer collaborations? Are you trying to understand, you know, how uh, COVID-19 uh, has impacted organizations and what are some of the recovery strategies that people are using? I, mean, I think those are all, you know, fair game for people to, to respond to in that survey to understand, you know, so we can understand what do you want to see from us? Yeah. And all being uh, customer experience professionals, we know that better success comes when you hear from your customers. So let us know. Either drop a comment uh, in the chat uh, right now and let us know what topics you'd like to see addressed or what would be on your wish list or visit cxpa.org and, and fill out that survey. We just opened the survey uh, late last night. Uh, thrilled to tell you, Gabe, we already have 285 responses uh, in. Wow, so, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, it'll be great to see what all those voices are. And the second thing that I really love about that survey is, is that it's really looking across different regions. So yeah. you'll see that we're asking you not to tell us what city or what country you're in, as much as we're asking what region of the world are you in. And regions of the world is a big part of our strategy for this year uh, as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, and I want to come back to that, uh, to that point. Uh, I don't want to stay kind of on this topic of surveys because, you know, when I think when we last had one of these broadcasts, we talked about our CX and higher education survey that we had launched into the field. So uh, would love to, to, for you to give an update on that effort, if you will. Yeah, the CX and higher education uh, survey uh, is still open, uh, cxpa.org slash higher ed. And in fact, it will probably stay open for a long time because we're finding really valuable information. Uh, what we've had so far, uh, we've had more than 50 uh, higher ed organizations around the world that have been identified that are offering one or more courses in customer experience. That uh, I think includes 17 different countries. So uh, we've been able to see that, you know, CX is, is not only something that is here in the U.S. and uh, the U.K. And, and Canada, 
but we're seeing that it's in Singapore, that it's in India, that it's in Spain, that it's in Peru. Uh, these are really important things for us to know and understand because it breaks some of our common perceptions, <laughs> you know, on yeah. the thought of where higher education is teaching CX. You know, as a matter of fact, some great programs going on in, in Italy uh, as well. So uh, a couple of thoughts and observations so far. You know, uh, there was a great PhD uh, dissertation that we found through this research, and it talked about CX as really being an umbrella discipline. You know, it's a discipline that brings in folks that uh, have been doing academic research in insights, in customer um, analysis, in data uh, analytics, uh, in quality, in, in different elements along the way. And I think that's really important, you know, because we think of CX often as a department or as a leader or as the individual holds a, a certification. But in fact, CX is that catalyst that happens across the organization. And we need to recognize all of those different skills and pieces that come together. So that's a big piece for us to think about. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Greg. And um, just wanted to share, you know, if you're interested in um, taking part in that survey, again, if you know of a, of a course uh, in an undergraduate in an undergraduate program, if you know of a graduate program, uh, CX MBA, if you know of a continuing education course, um, we want to hear from you. Um, you know, I was curious about my own alma mater, so I just you know Googled uh, University of Northern Iowa and customer experience, and you know they had a course, so I plugged that into the survey. So would love to hear from you there at uh, cxpa.org/higher-ed if that's something that, uh, that you want to take part in. So. Greg, I want to come back to something that you said earlier, and that is around the idea of becoming involved regionally. So tell me a little bit more, tell the audience a little bit more about how we're going about doing that. Yeah. So one of the silver linings of the pandemic is recognizing that Zoom allows us to uh, sidestep some of the traditional obstacles. We no longer need people to travel to attend a meeting together. They can hop on a Zoom call and, and meet and connect with peers. And that's had two uh, valuable pieces for us. One, it's allowed uh, places and areas like CXPA India to be able to bring together people who may be based in different cities and, and be quite a distance from one another, or even have a long commute from where they work and where they live to where we'd be holding that, that meeting. So we see within India that CXPA India under uh, Nish Kamath's uh, leadership has really uh, grown over the last year. Some nice active uh, individuals, some great conversations going on. But beyond just being together in India and across India, we're also seeing CXPA members from other parts of the globe come together and participate. Mike Bartlett, who uh, is uh, CCXP and so well known for his uh, CCXP exam simulator, is uh, active in the CXPA India network. And that's fantastic. That's you know, uh, we in the US stole him from the UK and, and now <laughs> India is trying to steal him back from us. <laughs> Yeah, so. that, that's that's great. And, and so, you know, I know, um, you know, this month especially, we, we've been able to uh, share some news around some some other exciting uh, networks and developments in that space. So uh, uh, for those who haven't seen uh, what's going on uh, elsewhere. I, you know, and it's just incredible to see the uh, diversity uh, and the inclusion that is happening across the XBI. You know, uh, we have our recognized training provider program that helps people prepare for the CCXP. And we've got uh, two that are specializing now in doing that in languages other than English. You know, so uh, we now have um, AKT in Israel uh, and uh, also um, our new friends in um, uh, France. Remind me of the company. CX Impact. CX Impact yes. <laughs> in, in France and, and uh, Olivier, the work that he's doing, you know, which is fantastic. Uh, and we, we continue to have, you know, online uh, Spanish uh, CCXP training from uh, Clear Action Continuum. We, you know, so that's fantastic to be able to think about how we can be more inclusive in that space. But we've had new RTPs providing training in a variety of different countries. You're probably a little bit closer to it than I am. So uh, uh, feel free to jump in if, if you'd like to. Uh, but uh, in yeah, no, I mean, I, I would just say that 
there is such a demand for quality CX training and that's coming through, you know, every day. And I know a lot of the emails that, you know, that we get is that people want to understand, you know, if I want a solid grounding in CX or if I want to prepare for a CCXP, I want to really understand that this training curriculum adheres to, you know, the, the CXPA is like, uh, uh, you know, consensus driven competency framework. And so, um, you know, I think we're seeing the, the, the demand really on the learner side as well. And I think that's really exciting because it says that people want to better understand this and, and they want to make sure um, that, that, that where they're going for training is a credible organization. Yeah, that's um, absolutely uh, true. And, uh, you know, that's the whole thought is, is really this idea of collaborations to with credible organizations to help advance CX. You know, uh, we know that there are a lot of options and content channels out there on CX, but we believe that it's important that uh, when you're having conversations around CX, that you're able to tap into the independent consensus driven CX framework and the independent CX community. And so uh, we've built some partnerships that are based on that uh, as well. So uh, we're excited that uh, the other day we launched the Asia Pacific uh, network with uh, Francis Go, CCXP uh, from Hayset Consulting. Uh, Francis's background is amazing in uh, digital transformation, in his leadership of uh, multinational companies, uh, and then his uh, development of a team that specializes in bringing CX to the uh, Singapore, China, uh, and Asia Pacific market. So we're excited about that. Uh, in Brazil, uh, Bruno is leading Amigos do CX, which is a great group that has brought people together for an in-person conference a year and a half ago and has an amazing online conference scheduled coming up later this uh, uh, year in Portuguese. You know, And the cool thing about that is, is that we're working together on that to make sure that it really uh, has the uh, connections uh, that bring forward uh, not just uh, what is happening in Brazil, but those connections, you know, to the uh, uh, global community. And uh, Benta, uh, thank you for asking that question. Do we have any thoughts or plans for expansion in Africa? We are so excited, actually, to reinvigorate and reconnect the African uh, CX community. Uh, under uh, Rolo's uh, leadership a few years ago, we started to make some toeholds in Nigeria and in Ghana. Uh, and in, we certainly have a strong community in, in South uh, Africa. But in each case, we found that we needed to actually bring things together in a slightly larger uh, umbrella. So uh, look for the launch of CXPA Africa very soon. Uh, the intent there is to bring together and to talk about CX in the African context uh, in a, a pan-continental way and then allow for the individual communities to build underneath that uh, as well. But uh, take a look on the uh, CXPA website. Uh, if you visit cxpa.org, you'll notice at the top uh, a, a button as well to find uh, your network. And you'll see that a couple different places throughout the website. Go ahead and click on and, and choose uh, your region and look at the networks that are there right now. Uh, if you don't see a, a network in your area, drop us a note at info at CXPA so that we can know that you're interested in getting involved uh, and connecting as well. But we're really excited about uh, bringing CX to all parts of the world. That's that's fantastic, Greg. I want to come back to um, you mentioned the Asia Pacific network. Um, just yesterday, we had a phenomenal conversation with Francis Go, uh, CCXP, and, and Neil Palai of Taragni Consulting. Uh, that conversation is up on our CXPA's YouTube channel. Check it out there. I'll also be having a video uh, coming shortly to. Uh, kind of preview a little bit of that conversation if you missed it uh, that we'll post to our LinkedIn channel. Um, Greg, what about C uh, CX in uh, Latin America? Is that something you could touch on? Yeah, so Latin America, like um, uh, CXPA Africa and CF CXPA um, Asia Pacific, uh, we're looking at launching a new network uh, that will be coming online within the next two weeks. Uh, under the uh, leadership of Enrique Sanz. And um, it, what's great about this is we Enrique has helped put together a leadership team 
that bridges uh, leadership from Mexico City, from Peru, from uh, Guatemala, and from the Dominican Republic to allow us to, and I think we have a Costa Rica uh, member of the leadership team you know, as well, allows us to really say, how can we go ahead and bring together some of the different thought leadership, some of the different energy, some of the different space? Because in particular, we want to be able to offer resources in uh, Spanish so that people can have those conversations in their native languages. As a matter of fact, we just are ready to announce a uh, partnership on a conference, uh, CX Champions with Perineum uh, out of Mexico that will be entirely uh, in, in Spanish. So it's a, another great way for us to work with partners who hold the CX, CX framework uh, as a organizing principle. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of, of the CX framework, um, you know, I know uh, towards the end of 2020, we talked about uh, some of the CX uh, job analysis work that was being undertaken to, you know, better understand uh, and, and perhaps refresh some elements of the CX competency framework. Uh, can you give us an update around that, that work and, and uh, you know, any, any thoughts around, around that? Yeah, what's fantastic is, is that the CX, CCXP exam is not based on a vendor getting together some of its employees or some of its best customers in a room and creating a certification. You know, the CCXP is based on going out and doing a survey of people uh, who serve as CX leaders in organizations of all types across the globe. Uh, we had over 600 respondents to our survey, and it was a long survey, you know, because it asked people, what are the things that you do to lead CX in your organization? How frequently do you do them and how important are they to your CX success? We then had an international panel that convened uh, virtually. We were going to do it in Orlando, but like so many other things, we had to pivot. Best laid plans, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they've spent the last sort of year delving in and saying, okay, well, what do these survey results mean? How do we organize and how do we pull that together in order to update and make sure that the CCXP framework stays current? Uh, so look for that information to uh, be used to update the CCXP exam starting in August. Uh, we'll actually have an announcement coming out in the next few days that if you're a researcher or you are a uh, consultant that helps prepare individuals for the CCXP exam, we'll be able to share some of the high level uh, results. We want everyone to engage in the high level results, but we don't want to confuse the candidates that are preparing to yeah. earn the CCXP right now, because that is a story. You know, the, the story of success around CCXPs right now is just Oh amazing. my gosh. You know, yeah. We are up to 1,191 uh, individuals that have earned and maintained the CCXP. And it's fantastic to think about the impact that is um, happening along the way. Um, Gabe, do you want to uh, point out the uh, job posting that you pointed out to me the, the other day? <laughs> I saw a, uh, a customer experience uh, leadership role uh, posted here in, in the US at Apple. And so I, I sent a text to Greg and I said, Greg, we've penetrated Apple. This is, uh, <laughs> this is big news. We have CAC, a CC, CCXP uh, preferred job posting uh, posted in Apple. So I thought that yeah. was pretty, pretty darn cool. You know, and that's, a, that's incredible. You know, and when we think about that, you know, just a week and a half ago, uh, Qualtrics posted their head of customer experience, uh, CCXP preferred. Um, earlier this year, there was a job posting from Facebook, uh, CCXP preferred. And it's not just here in the US, you know, uh, I think you featured the other day, a, uh, um, VP of customer experience from Droom in yep. India, it was CCXP preferred. So it's fantastic to see that. Hi, Carl. Good to uh, see you. Aloha. <laughs> I was, I, I'm looking forward to when we can be together in person again uh, next uh, uh, May in, in Orlando. So uh, good good to see you. And uh, uh, thank you for uh, carrying the spirit forward. We, we appreciate that. Um, but CCXP, I mean, that's such a great uh, success story. It's helping people who are looking to advance CX for their companies. It's helping people in their own career management. Uh, and it's helping people who are trying to make themselves as attractive as they can for employers uh, uh, in these challenging times. Yeah, great point, Greg. I, I, um, I think uh, I, I may have mentioned to you that 
I'm seeing more and more of time spent. I need to dedicate a block of time to responding to all the LinkedIn messages that I get with questions around CCXP and interest around CCXP globally. So it's so great to see. Um, and I'm always happy to take the time to, to answer those those questions. So Greg, let's, uh, you know, in the last bit of time that we have today, let's talk about involvement. Um, how can how can viewers get involved with CXPA? What can they do? What are some of the benefits of, of, uh, of being involved with us that you'd like to share? Yeah, well, I'm going to start with repeating something that people may not have caught from the beginning, which is right now we're planning our virtual programs for the balance of this year. So the number one action that I'd like our listeners to uh, take is visit cxpa.org and click on the survey link at the very top of the page. Let us know what topics and what formats you'd like to have offered by CXPA headquarters, our sponsors, our partners, and our local networks so that we can make sure that we're bringing you the topics. And, and Mary, I promise you, we're going to have something for Kenya, something for Africa for you. Gabe, I'm going to throw it back and forth. Let's do a little challenge match here. I'll say okay. something when you say something. OK. <laughs> Uh, yeah, involvement. Find your, we talked about this a little bit, but find your CX community. Um, you do not have to be a CXPA member uh, to join a community. You do have to create an account, uh, but but join us there. Find, uh, find your tribe, find your geographic region, uh, your community, because uh, that's where we all thrive. Yeah. So uh, CXPA uh, is not just coming to the CXPA website. It's also connecting with like-minded people. Larry, um, I have to give you a shout out. Thank you for uh, an invite to me to uh, join Clubhouse. I'm just lurking at the moment, <laughs> but uh, you're right. There are some great conversations that are going on uh, that you're leading, Stacey Sherman's leading, Stephanie Toombs uh, leading. Uh, and it's great to see that the conversation about how do we do great CX and how do we spread the gospel of CX uh, is happening on Clubhouse uh, as well as other social media platforms uh, around the world. So join a social media network and follow CX. If you're not following the uh, CXPA LinkedIn uh, page, just go ahead and hit the follow below because we've got some cool uh, LinkedIn uh, programs coming up. So there's a there's a softball for you, Gabe. Team me right up. Yes, we have uh, four more LinkedIn Live programs coming up this month. Um, hope that you are going to join us on Monday. We've got a fantastic panel celebrating women in CX leadership uh, with, with guest host Crystal Montague, CCXP, some tremendous women from around the globe who will be joining us uh, for a discussion around elevating women in CX leadership. So hope you'll join us for that one. Um, other programs happening in March, uh, discussion about CX in Latin America. We have a uh, discussion with Daniel Ord, CCXP, recognized training provider, uh, to talk about his experience uh, building customer-centric culture with a telecoms client over a two-year period running over 60 workshops and some of the lessons that he learned from that experience. Um, and then on uh, March 30th, we'll be talking about CX in Brazil with our friend Bruno of Amigos to CX. So um, check out the CXPA event calendar on our website for not just the LinkedIn live events and live streams that we're doing, but also um, webinars, um, you know, local network events, uh, recognized training provider courses. Um, check that out and, and get involved. Over yeah, to you, Greg. Up, yeah, I want to pick up that uh, recognized training provider uh, course uh, recommendation for a moment there. You know, I think right now a lot of people are looking at the energy around the CCXP program. They're seeing those job postings and they're asking themselves, what can I do in order to begin my CCXP journey? And so I, I just want to give a quick and easy uh, approach for you. Visit uh, ccxp.org. That will bring you right to the portion of the CXPA website that covers the CCXP. And look at the CX framework, the CX competency framework. Read each of the statements and ask yourself, have I done this before? And if so, do I rate myself as strong, medium, or developmental uh, on that framework? Use those areas that are new to you or areas for development as the way to choose which of the webinars and the LinkedIn Lives you tune into. Because we all love the case studies, but if you're going to get stronger, you need to focus your attention onto the skills that you may not have needed yet, but you are going to need for long-term sustainable success. Yeah, absolutely, Greg.
That's a great point. Um, and then, you know, to put those skills into practice on the job once you've gotten that knowledge, right? That's, uh, and that's what it's all about. And it, you know, the best thing about uh, CX is CX is a team sport. You know, we're here together. Uh, the uh, folks that you see tuning in, Carl and Larry, and uh, the folks that are, we've mentioned along the way with Bruno and Francis and uh, Olivier, uh, everybody is here to help support you and to help you be successful so that you can have that opportunity to, uh, not only do the work that you're doing, but have another perspective because CX is all about being a catalyst that helps bring other people together to achieve goals. And yeah. sometimes part of that success is just building that perspective. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think, I think that, you know, that, go ahead. Yeah, good. No, no, no. I'm going to let you have a comment and then I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. Work. You know, it's team <laughs> sport. Um, I think one of the things I love most about my job is I feel like I get to be a point guard to share and uplift the stories of our global um, professionals, you know, whether that's through, you know, helping someone, you know, get a blog post up on cxpa.org or, you know, an insight exchange video that uh, we get to share on our LinkedIn or, uh, you know, Facebook or YouTube channels. So, um, you know, I think that's, uh, that's something that I found is really fulfilling uh, from being involved with this community and the great people uh, who are affiliated with us. Yep. I, I think that's 100%. So uh, closing action item, uh, I'm going to give you two websites. One for you as an individual, uh, cxpa.org. If you haven't created a free account on the website, go and do that now. Affiliate with a network, uh, be connected so that we can keep you informed of what's going on uh, and allow you to manage your personal career. That's our mission is to help support you through your professional career. The second is what is cx.com. What is cx.com takes you to the portion of our website that we hope you will share with your boss, with your mother, with your brother, with your sister <laughs> to help them understand a little bit better that customer experience is a structured discipline that requires people to work together across the entire relationship that a customer has with an organization so that we can deliver results uh, for folks that uh, make a better experience for the customer, better experience for you as an employee, and a better outcome for the company as well on their bottom line. So uh, take a look uh, and let us know your thoughts and your feedback. Uh, you know, we're so excited about what we're hearing and what we're seeing, and we hope that you are too. Fantastic. Greg, was a pleasure. Hope that all of you out there stay safe, have a great week, and that we will see you virtually soon. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone.